All right, CPTF Solo. So we're going to start off with the primary focuses of Solo. Okay, so it's the equal development of all three twirling modes. So you have your aerials, which include your spins and your stationary complex, your rolls and your contact material. Travel complex might be included, but it should not be overworked. Um, it's not a freestyle program, it's a Solo. And you only have a lane to work in, not the entire floor. Contact material includes finger twirls, flips, swings, and in-grip material. There's a variety of planes, patterns, and directional changes that should be developed. Footwork and dance moves are not featured as much as they might in musical events. However, they should display proper technique if they are used at all times. Proper baton and baton, excuse me, body technique and staying within the skill level of the athlete. Proficient athletes will display a good sense of general handling, so that it includes speed, smoothness, and control. A variety of patterns, planes, and directional changes should be considered in the construction of the routine. So it's not all just facing the judge, you know, there could be some side pattern planes, um, directional, um, even on the diagonal, catching on the diagonal, sometimes on the hip. Okay, so what's some um, non-material that you might find in solo? <laughs> well, if you had another baton, sure. <laughs> Triple walkover. Yes. Anyone else? That was a triple walkover? Is that home? Mm hmm Yep. So too much travel complex. Uh, too much dead stick drops. Sometimes that's, you know, overwhelming to see. Uh, and isolated dance moves. So these can affect the score if they're overworked. Uh, they are not part of the event, so it may lower the score considerably. The three modes could be ignored or not have enough sufficient time dedicated to them. These are our role models, and they do differ a little bit in score from the WBTF. So not to look at you US judges, but there is a score conversion, <laughs> which uh, brings me up to our um, couple of scales that we do use. So this one does compare our CBTF with the WBTF as well, but uh, this one here. Okay, so you can see not so much in the ex excellent and superior, but more so in the lower ranges that there are a bit, there is a bit of a difference between WBTF and CBTF. Um, see the advancing score, 2.5, B, N, 4, A, 6. Okay. So this was reformatted for um, CBTF in 2007. It's a scale that we use and you might have in your binders. Um, basically outlining the ranges of aerials, rules, and contacts uh, for all different score scores listed here from your C's to your A's. Take a good look at it. Because we're going to play a game. <laughs> well, you should know it. <laughs> so same idea, though. It is, well, it has been converted for CBTF. So it's the same idea. You should know what a double elbow would go in. So I'm going to give you... Okay, so I'm going to put the answers up. Let's see if you guys got it right. All right. So, that's a letter J. That's a letter J in the first box, just so you know. It's just the font that I chose for some reason. Okay, so 2.5 to 3.4 aerials. It's the letter J. So spins, vertical one spin, one spin variation, reception, two spin. Horizontal one spin, toss variation, uh, reception, stationary complex, single em element in a vertical or horizontal reorientation factor, uh, example toss illusion or toss flashback. Then we move on to letter E for rolls. 
Single element rules, vary release or reception, double element combination rules, vary release or reception, figure eight rules, fishtails, front loops, double arm, elbow pops. And C, more variety of contact material in regards to facing varied directions and planes. Use of body movements. The contact material becomes a series rather than merely connecting material. Risk frequency, periodic risk with long intervals of minimal risk. Okay, so that's your... That's your 2.5 to 3.4. It's your lowest on the, well, not lowest. There is one more lower um, on that scale. But just the importance of this is to kind of, the importance of this is to be more familiar with your scales rather than, I know when I make them, the pictures of your role models, right? It's good, it's good to go back to the picture of the role model just for a quick refresher, but you should know exactly what a one spin goes in or a five spin. Uh, maybe a five spin lock, catch long arm or where does that go? So you kind of have to be prepared and know your scales more so than just the image of a girl on a page. So that's uh, my little game there. I do <laughs> get you thinking. Okay, so I have a couple of videos. Actually, I do have a question. So <laughs> when someone comes onto the floor and they start their solo, do you find that do you find that you're going, okay, what are they doing? Do they pull up and they do their three spin catch left, or do they do maybe eight counts of contact material and then their element? Um, do you find that you reward that better if they have a little bit more of a build and they're it's a little more dramatic, exciting, what are they gonna do? Or do you like it when they pull up that big trait right away so you know, okay, they're an A athlete or they're a B an athlete? Just kind of open discussion. Do you find that affects your judging at all? No, you just the prep before the aerials. Yeah, the well, do you, do you find someone that takes more time to like introduce himself and then right. do a trick with someone that goes first? Is there a like, okay, it depends if it's going to be like that throughout, like yeah. 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 trick, trick, yeah. trick yeah. without yeah. any it really goes, you you follow that balance, right? You yes. don't want to just constantly do trick, 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 trick. And that is there that connecting material that yeah. it made me kind of wow? She just came out of a I don't know, some kind of really hard contact material, yes. no preparation in their element for a triple okay. illusion, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I bring that up just because sometimes I find I'm watching an athlete and they're taking their time with that swing section open. And I think, what is this athlete? What, what skill is she or he? Um, and then they pull up and maybe they do a five spin. You go, whoa, that didn't seem like it. I didn't see that coming because they're doing a swing section. You think that maybe they'd be doing harder contact material or just something more creative in their opening or wherever the trick may be. You know, some kids just need a run. Uh, and, and then they do make the surprise, but I don't think that they're necessarily setting up the surprise as they are just their confidence level, mm -hmm. getting on the floor for 10 or 12 seconds, the baton's still in their hand because they never left it. Oh. But, you know, that's their build to that um, um, trick. But I think it comes down to the answer to how I would answer that question is that it never bothers me. Um, it wouldn't affect my score how they started. What would how would have affected is that if it was consistent throughout that demand, of course, it would um, be higher. Yeah. Do you find that maybe you, your interest isn't as peaked when they're doing a swing section open and then they do a five spin? You're like, that was kind of confusing. Yeah. yeah good question. Well, my score would have jumped in my head a whole lot. Right. Right. <laughs> if I'm starting. <laughs> I'm like, wow, okay. yeah, yeah, so. I thought because the iCup grid came out much earlier than content guidelines, I thought we were advised not to use the grid last year since it had gone more to the proficiency models. So I'm just showing just to show the progression of difficulty, but not necessarily the score or or did I misinterpret what I thought that was the reason we were using the grid line or the grid chart anymore because they don't obviously match with iCup anymore with the content guidelines? I was mainly just using it as because those same tricks are still a 2.5 or a 4 or a 6, right? Well, it's not necessarily 
using that grid I by the table is just the fact that you should know what demands fall into what categories, like whether it's a rules aerial contact, is that five spin in the it could very well be a VI, right? But it depends on what else she's doing that puts her into the A. So I must just say and I didn't put the scale up there to say like you have to have this on your table. Just want to make sure that you know that information and where it falls on into those levels, into those regions. Help you tomorrow when you see those things. Like, right. I, you know, I know. You should know what a two point five material should look like. Right. B I B N A. Sorry. B -A. Right. Remembering about technique, not just the material. <laughs> Because right. sometimes you see a five spin, it should have been a three. That's right. That's should be a general. Okay. Let's get into the first video. I think she'd definitely get a six here. Yeah. I, I, I'd say like six three, six four maybe. But it's one of those trade-offs. Yeah. Because yeah. she's a, she is completing the material, but she has such poor, poor technique. technique. Yeah. Yes. You know, all, and, and not just poor technique in her twirling, but her, her body. Her body, like everything she does, she does, she, she doesn't complete it all, but mm -hmm. she completes it, but it's definitely a full range down, I think. Because of, um, but we all agree that she would be an A athlete. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, I didn't. No, no I'd, I didn't. I'd say I maybe mid to high fives, yeah. but I don't think he's deserving of a six. I just think he's deserving of a technique. Yeah, yeah. yeah. her balls are stronger. Her balls are stronger than a couple of Like, I've got her above, like, the role model. Like, yeah, like, she's better than the role model. It is a five. There is curlers in the A division in our country that are not as good as her. Yes, there are several of them. And, you know, I know what you're saying. It's the same judges. Like there's you know a few well like that has been rewarded in the past for an A level so like we either need to say no and all be on a consistent basis and not give it a six because when there's discrepancies and the coaches the athletes they don't understand so I, that's why I said in Canada do I think that she would get an A score yes do I think she's a six 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 seven no but do I think that she she's would get border, right? yeah, she's she's right. Right. yeah right and the other thing that really answer that question for me, she didn't cheat her roles. No. 
Yes, um, very nice. The vertical yeah. ones, yeah. the horizontal yeah. ones, was, uh, breaks, but I she didn't grab. She didn't no. grab on yeah. them. Oh, her rolls by by far the best. Or, or yeah. She's yeah. made yeah. six yeah. on her rolls yeah. and then her aerials and con well, contact was nothing. Okay, um, this is from the CBTF no, library, mind you. We'll so her first score was six point six. She had one draw. Six point six. Six point six. Okay, so her strengths included um, good posture, but she did have weak speed, weak uh, free arms. Her movements weren't extended, so like, for example, her monster arms. Her monster rolls had bent arms, uh, so she should have had straighter arms. Um, her illusions, they weren't properly in alignment. They weren't full rotation. Um, she does maintain consistent speed, um, but doesn't have a lot of revolution. The balance of her modes is within her skill level, and her rolls are developing nicely. Her weaknesses, she crosses over on her spins. Uh, her monster roll is assisted, uh, which means that she could perform a little bit stronger to get a higher score. Okay, athlete number two. Where would you score her? Where I'd like to score her, or where should she score? <laughs> I'd say four eight. Okay. Anyone else? Like four five. Like four two. I think she would score like a five two. Yeah, here. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. So her score was four point seven, and she had five drops. <laughs> Her strengths. The nice back neck section, however, may be too long, so she could add some variation to that to make it more detailed and interesting. Um, her three modes are covered. Her weaknesses, her two footing spins and head uh, thrown back. Um, she cups her cut back rolls, uh, lack of coordination and body, of body and baton, and she is right hand dominant in her aerials, which is her weakest mode. She does often slide to the end. You can see her, she does have some really nice fluidity in her flourishes and that preparation, but you can visibly see her hands slide off the center tape to the outside, which is not uncommon, but it's quite noticeable. She does, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of drops. Okay, I think we have time for one.
How would you score this athlete? So, I agree, but the girl was drops. The flow was better. That's what I was trying to She did have some she drops. Too. She did have she some drops. She technically handles the time better. Better, yeah. She does. You would be right. This <laughs> athlete had a score of five. Uh, ahead of the other athletes. They were big drops. It was a double element and a couple other aerials that uh, were going to hurt her score a bit. Four seven. So she had a good start to combination rules and with lots of her variety. Contact is generally lacking uh, demand, but displays a balance. So as she throws her, she crosses over, spins with two feet. She has basic between those elements and the placing of her aerials often not correct. Uh, she often cranks, she cranks up to the height, and in doing that, it's not properly because she's overturned. 